She was like, where's your buddies? Where's Reed? She started naming them all. Yeah, church. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, I forgot to Boy. ask somebody. I got, I know I got somebody. Yes, yes. But I forgot to ask somebody yes. to take me to church. And so how the Lord touched my youngest daughter, Jada's heart. And she came and picked me up and brought me to church. But you know, that's just a minor. Come on, sister. That's just something that really minor. Yes. But I'm so grateful to be in this house. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. And I said, Lord, I said, I'm asking you to help me, to give me the exit plan to get out of this earth. You know, we all need an exit plan, y'all. We got it. You know, Glory. because he's coming Glory. soon. Yes. And so we need to make ourselves ready yes. to, to be able to make this journey. And I said, Lord, I begin to cry, you know. And I said, this thing is so real. And I just need somebody to understand how real it is to me, right? But then I thought about it. I was like, you understand. You know what it means yes. to me to be able to make this journey, oh, yes. to be able to let nothing bother me, yes. mess with me, yes. you know, hinder me, yes. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so I'm just so grateful to just be in this house. Thank you, Lord. I don't have to Bless be the Lord. I don't have to worry about my five kids. That's right, I don't have to worry about my husband. I don't have to worry about my job. Yes. You know, I'm just here in Jesus. Yes. And I'm loving it. Yes. You know, yes. Jesus, yes. Name, I love you, Lord. Yes. Love you too, Sister Mary. Sister Mary, say, I'm loving it. Yes. Somebody say, I'm loving it. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord, sister. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
tried to afflict me for one week. But when I went to the doctor, they said everything was all right. I know God is a good God. How do you know God is a good God? We praise the Lord. We don't want to overlook no one. If someone was standing and we didn't see you, feel free to stand. Sister Ridgeway, praise the Lord now. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord for that beautiful testimony for Sister Ridgeway. Praise the Lord for all our visitors, saints and visitors. At this time, praise the Lord for every beautiful testimony. And my heart was just uplifted. I thank the Lord for the song, Sister Crystal's song. When I rose this morning, when I rose, I didn't have no doubt. I know that the Lord would bring me out. And absent, we'd like to give honor to our pastor and his absent, Bishop Peter Phillips. And his wife, Evangelist Phillips. Give honor to our elder, Elder Everton Sewell. Sister Valerie Sewell, see you, sister. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All the ministers, thanks to God as a whole. At this time, we're going to have a testimony. One of our evangelists, she's been away for a little while. But we're so glad to see her this morning. <laughs> sister. <laughs> Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to get a testimony from our evangelist, evangelist Irene Dollar. Father and evangelist Irene Dollar will be our speaker. None other than one of our speakers, Minister Joanne St. Clair. Praise the Lord. Followed by Elder Everton Sewell. Let's receive them in this order by Sandy Nine. Evangelist Irene Dollar. Let's receive Hallelujah. 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 Testify about that the Lord blessed 
to me with. Took me out of my old apartment that was just really in bad shape and moved me into a brand new apartment. Amen. Brand new stove, brand new uh, everything in it. And even got a brand new washer and dryer. I didn't have to go up and down the stairs anymore. The Lord did that for me. And I began to have hallucinations and you know, when I look at something, it's something else, and it's not what I really see. I even had someone to come and take care of me and be in my apartment with me most of the day until they had to go back home. I was, you know, and she was there, and I would look out the window or look at something, and I would say, oh, look at all those people. I see a whole lot of people there. It's a wedding out there on the side of the house. And she said... I don't see anybody out there. And I stopped talking. I didn't say another word. I said, the devil is a lie. But it got worse. I called my daughter. One day I said, there's, people, there's a man out there. And I think he's trying to see up in my apartment. And she, she called the neighbor that I had and told the neighbor to go over and see about me. When she got there, I told her, I said, it might not be so. That's what I thought I was saying. It might not be so. And she said, well, let me, let me just look and let me look around your apartment. And when she did that, uh, she said, it's nobody there. And I called my daughter. I said, look, I got to get out of this apartment. I don't, I don't want to be alone. And she came and they took me. And I thank God for that. I thank God for that. I thank God for my children. Yes, thank God for my children. Yes, I know, my husband should have been there, but he was not there. He was gone. He, was, he got another wife. But I thank God that I begin to depend on Jesus. Yes, I begin to tell my kids, you make plans. I'm going to have to get things over to y'all that y'all will help me. You know, so that I do the right thing. And they begin to come and see about me. They begin to take care of my bill. And I was having a rough time. But you know what? I said, Father, you never failed me yet. You never failed me yet. You made ways for me out of nowhere. And I began to turn myself inside out. And I began to seek the Lord and seek him. I began to have church in my apartment by myself. I began to call on God. And my daughter took me in to her house. Her, she had a brand new house, beautiful house. And I went to her house. And she, they took her and her husband took care of me and provide for me. But then after that, I began to feel better. I began to feel safe. Yes. It's a wonderful thing when you can be feels I mean, it's a terrible thing when you feel don't feel safe. And if you know how not feeling been alone and nobody there and nobody to to help you, you feel unsafe. But I praise God. I had to work on me and build up my faith. I have been safe for a long time. For a long for years. And thought I you know, all right, I knew how to, but see, God going to give you a test. He will. He will give you a test, and he will help you. He will show you. He will help you to realize, you know, you're not never alone. And he began to prove himself to me. And I thank the Lord for that. And when my daughter called me, said, Mom, I'm going to have somebody bring you down here to Baltimore, Maryland. And I said, oh, all right. So I was going to be leaving my daughter, one daughter's house, and went to her house down there in Baltimore. And I was there for two months. I was two months in Baltimore. And they began to talk to me, and, you know, they asked me questions. I said, well, you know, I'm going to overcome this. I'm going to overcome all this. Because when they started talking, they began to label what they thought I had. But I praise God that God is able. 
Don't you doubt, don't doubt God. Don't doubt God. Because look, all he's looking, all Satan's looking for you just to have a little bit of doubt. But we got to take that faith, uh, that mustard seed. We're just little too. But God will take you all the way there, all the way around, all the way around. And he'll place that joy, that great joy that you can have. And I began to say, Lord, if you would just bless me. And then my legs started hurting so badly that I couldn't hardly walk. And I said, Lord, I, I got to get through this. I got to get through all of this. Because I know it's a test. I, I love this song. I know God will take care of me. I know God will prepare for me. And he'll make a way out of nowhere. And you'll be tested for the faith that you say you have. And that tells me that the Lord is soon to come. When Satan begins to just dig at you and dig at you and try to say, oh no, it's not like that. But it is like that. God is real. God is real. Oh, you, need, you have to trust in him. And then you have to sometimes just set yourself aside and say, all right. You know all this and all that. You read God's word and you believe God's word. But the enemy is getting stronger and he's stronger. And if we don't pay attention, we ain't got it yet. It's when Jesus comes. Because you know what? When we say we love the Lord and then disobey the Lord and then say, oh, well, forgive me, Lord, and go back and do the same thing that you were told not to do. I said, Lord, I don't want to be like that. Lord, just heal my body. Please, Lord, continue to heal. If you want to be healed, if he says you're healed, you're healed. If he says you're delivered, you're delivered. And if he says that you need to get up, get up. You need to tell somebody, tell somebody. You need to do those things so that you can be prepared and able to help and help yourself. And I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord. I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. Yes. You know, I stayed on the, uh, the TV, on the YouTube, and I would listen, and I would hear. I said, all right, they're, they're singing that song pretty good, pretty good. And being here today, I'm glad to be here and hear the songs of praise. Amen. The songs of praise. Yes. The songs of praise. That God gives us a praise. All you have to do is start singing. And let it ring and, and deal in your heart. Yes. And then you can say, all right, okay, I'm stronger today. You know, um, just get a song of praise. Play the, the, uh, the CD player or something, a song that will lift you up. And don't be on the phone. There's a lot of times, you, you know, you get calls that you don't even want to talk about, talk to. But if you just stay focused, God is able to bring you back from any sense of life. So I desire your prayers to pray much for me. I'm still going to be under the doctor's care. And there's still some things that have to be taken care of that I know the Lord is going to fix it. He's going to fix it. Fix it in due time. And you know, because God's will will be done. Yes. You know, a lot of times you hear people say, Well, you know, yeah, we got to do this, and God, you know, God said, He's the one that makes the decision. He's the one that changes things. He's the one that does it. And if you don't listen to Him, you might miss your chance of deliverance. Of deliverance. So I thank the Lord. Thank you for hearing the Lord. Thank you for the time to listen to me. Continue to pray for me. God has never failed me. He taught me how to say, Lord, let your will be. Let your will be. And so it will be. Pray for me in Jesus' name.
what you've done for me. That's why the people that's out there, it don't make no difference what kind of condition they in. I met a young man yesterday. He didn't look that good. He didn't smell that good. But you know what? I sat with him and I talked with him. I said, how can I talk about you when I used to be out there with you? Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, I'll never forget. I'll never forget. Don't forget. Don't forget where the Lord has brought us from. I want to give honor to God and to his son, Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. To our pastor, Bishop Phillips, his wife, Evangelist Phillips, Elder Sewell, his queen that is sitting in the back, Sister Valerie Sewell. To the saints of God of the Most High, to friends and loved ones, I'll never forget. See, when I came in those doors 34 years ago, I knew exactly what I was coming for. I was coming to meet a man named Jesus. I said I was coming to meet a man named Jesus. I got tired. If you're not tired of something, you're not going to come out of it. But I got tired of living in sin. Was I brought up like that? No. I had good parents. Even though they were strict, I still have a problem with that. And I'm strict my own self now. But God is a good God. I said God is a good God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's so good. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I thank the Lord because I feel good in my sanctified soul. I don't need to go into details, but he brought me out. I said, he brought me out. I said, he brought me out. And he brought me out all right. I praise the Lord because a lot of times I get frustrated. As I say, I'm just like a sanctified junkie. I want a quick fix. I don't want to go through nothing. I don't want to have to go through these problems and dead problems. But guess what? It don't work like that with the Lord. You might have to wait a long time. But keep on waiting. The scriptures say, don't be anxious for nothing. And all my life, I've been waiting. And I'm still waiting. I said all my life. But good things come to those that wait. I praise the Lord because he's worthy. And he's able. So glad to see you. Evangelist Nolan, a warrior, a warrior in the Lord. She has been an example to me ever since I've been here. And it's many more, and I could go on, it's many more. But as I was sitting there, and the Lord had dealt with me for a while now, with this uh, scripture. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. It's good to take your time. But would you turn to me to the book of Acts, chapter 4. Book of Acts, chapter 4. And I thank the Lord for truth. Jesus said, upon this rock, I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. I thank the Lord for a man named Bishop Amen Bailey. Oh, Halamasata, I will never forget him. Never forget him because he took out time with me. I was a very difficult person, but he took out time with me. He didn't kick me to the curve. Over 20 something years, he counseled me. Oh, hallelujah. 
as I say, all over this church, on the roof, over at his house, in here, in the office, in the playground, in the parking lot. He took out time with my daughter, Sister Nigel, when the enemy attacked her in her mind. I didn't know how to deal with it. A lot of things is going to come into your life. You're not going to know how to deal with it. But God will put somebody in your life that will help you. And he put Bishop Bailey and Mother Bailey to help my daughter, Sister Nigel. Had a, a, a mental problem. And I came out of a family with Jamaicans. We don't know nothing about that. And I did not know how to help her. I know how to pray, but I didn't know how to help her. But Bishop and Mother would take her and take Brother Benny and all my grandkids and have them over there for weeks at a time and pray her back through. I'll never forget the man. He took up time with my son, Bob. Oh, hallelujah. The one that's in a wheelchair now. He used to bring him here at the church. He used to go out and they used to do things together and work together around the church. He took out time with my husband who is not here anymore. And I believe it with all my heart. Because of the love that he showed my husband, my husband was able to come in and get saved. I thank and praise the Lord for the man. I'm going to always talk about him. But as we go into Acts chapter 4, verse 12. And when you have it, you say amen. Amen. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under the heavens given among men whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw that they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed, standing with them, they could not say nothing against it. But when they had co commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, what shall we do to these men? Excuse me, for that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that spread no further among the people unless straightly threatened them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. And if I was used for a thought, it would be there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. And that name is Jesus. I said that name is Jesus. If you don't forget, if you forget your name, and if you forget anybody else's name, don't forget that name. Because that's the name that saves. That's the name that heals. That's the name that delivers. That's the name that cleanses. That's the name that loves. It's the name is Jesus. And I was thinking in the medium of my mind, a lot of times in the past and sometime now in the presence, I jump up and I react before I think. And the Lord, he began to give it to me. You must acknowledge me in all things. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. But acknowledge me in all thy ways, and I will direct your path. And I begin to say, Lord, when I wake up, he allowed me. Because if he didn't allow me to wake up, I couldn't get up. And I begin to say to the Lord, what is it that you would have me today? Order my steps, Lord, in your will. And I thank and praise the Lord.
because Jesus is the man that hung on that tree for me and you. Jesus is the one that gave his life for a ransom for me and you. For God is a spirit. And he said those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But God needed a spiritual man. And that man was Jesus. He was martyred for me and for you and the whole human family. He hung on that tree. He died and he bled. Oh, hallelujah. They put thorns on his head. Oh, hallelujah. They beat him and whipped him all night long. Hallelujah. They stuck him in his side with a sword and out came water and blood. They gave him vinegar to drink. Hallelujah. There is no other name given by the men whereby we must be saved. That name is Jesus. I said that name is Jesus. I said that name is Jesus. Regardless of what you go through, you remember Jesus. Don't forget where the Lord has brought us from. I know where he brought me from. That's why I'm so serious like I am. My kids say, Mom, do it take all that? I say, yes, it take all that and then some. Because I was once out those doors. I was once out those doors right there. I was out there for almost 30 years before I came in here. And, and I praise God. I experienced almost getting killed, been shot at, been stabbed at. Oka masata, hila masaya. I thought I was bad. I thought I was tough. But it don't work like that out there. Oh, hallelujah. I praise God. I was walking on Genesee Street. And I said, Lord, it's got to be something better than this. I'm tired. I am tired. Tired of my sinful old life. I might have not said sinful. But I let him know that I was tired. And one day I went to the hospital. And I met Sister Irene Leslie. We knew one another from the world. And as I, I always say, we used to be scared of her because she was tough. We used to go to OYA. And I mean she was bad. They called her red. But look at her now. Beautifully saved. And I went into the hospital. And she was there. And she witnessed to me. And she invited me to come to the Church of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. I said there's no other name. Given among men. Whereby we must be saved. And at that time it was my sister Jackie. And it was my cousin, Sister Mavis. And we all said we want to come to church. We want something better in life. And I came here in 1985 and was baptized in Jesus' name and filled up with the gift of the Holy Ghost. But you know what? I left. And that was the worst thing that I could have ever did. I left from 1985 to 1989. And I mean, my God, I'll tell you right now, whatever you go through, stay in the house of the Lord. Amen. I said, stay in the house of the Lord. Because there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. I never came back here again into this church until 1989 because I was ashamed. I was ashamed. I wasn't going to come in my undone condition. And the Lord allowed me. I was on Watkins Terrace right down the street here. And two women that I call my best friend. They tried to kill me that night. And you would have thought that after all that, that I had been through, I would have came to the church. Still didn't come to the church. But I thank God I started working with Mother Lois Coachman, a warrior in the Lord. And a lot of times I went to work, I wasn't decent. I smelled like, you know, alcohol and liquor. But you know what? She entreated me. And she said, daughter, she said, you better make it back before it's too late. And a lot of times I didn't want to hear it, but there's no other name given among men 
whereby we must be saved. And when I came back that day to work, there was a woman there that had a devil in her. And she grabbed my hand. Here I am, a sinner. And she grabbed my hand and she said, let's pray. And we begin to pray and that spirit calmed down. But what got me back here to 16 Helena Street, I know it was the Lord. It was when I heard that Deborah Beatty was saved. Oh, hallelujah. That's why I came here. I didn't come here to get saved. I came to see Deborah Beatty. Because we was just together. We was out there partying. We was getting high. And now you mean to tell me she's saved? This is unbelievable. Oh, hallelujah. I said, oh, hallelujah. But there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. You stand up for the name of Jesus. You stand up for righteousness. You stand up for holiness. You might be hated. So what? Jesus was. He was talked about. He was lied on. But guess what? There was no other name given among men. God sent him to do a job. He was just a vessel. But it was God speaking through him. And a lot of times, you're going to be denied. You're going to be hated because you stand up for this name. But this name is highly exalted. This is the name that God gave Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to us. You might be persecuted. You might go through heartaches. Your children might come against you. You might lose your job. Hallelujah. Your co-workers might come at you. But there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Don't forget about the name Jesus. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The power come from Jesus. The power come from Jesus. Said there's a miracle in this room with your name on it. There's a healing in this room with your name on it. There's a breakthrough with your name. Somebody, I said somebody, I said somebody, put a praise on it. I said put a praise on it. Don't you give up. Don't you take down. You know what you've been taught. You hold on to it. Because in the end, you're going to win. Pray my strength in the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. There is none other name under heaven given among men. Everybody we must be saved. We thank you, Lord God and His Son Jesus Christ, who's the head of my life to my wife, Bishop Phillips in his absence, and all the saints of the Most High God. We've got to know who Jesus is. We have to know who Jesus is and what He has done as she was talking. She testified about how she got converted and somebody invited her to church, Sister Irene. Somebody is always out there caring about somebody. Why can't it be me? Why can't it be you? Jesus cared about the people he came in contact with. But what they were looking for, many of them were looking for Jesus to redeem and to rescue them from the bondage of the Roman Empire. But Jesus didn't come for that. He came to save men from their sin. That's why he came, not to, to get them out of the oppression that they were under in the economic standard, but no, he was looking for a greater thing. Because the soul of every man belonged to God, and Jesus came to save you and me out of our sin. When Jesus met the woman at the well, and he asked her to go call her husband. First, he asked her for a drink. She's telling him all these things, but Jesus said, if you only knew yes. who it is that asked you for a drink, then you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Yes. After he had the conversation with her, she went away and she said to them, come see a man. Come see a man. Yes. A man approved of God. Yes. 
with signs and wonders. A man that God appointed and anointed to rule over his kingdom. A one that God has set there. There is no other name. Buddha can't help you. Muhammad can't help you. Nobody else can help you. The only person that can save you is Jesus. We can't even save ourselves. We can't even turn our lives around. Had it not been for the Lord who was on our side, had it not for Jesus who rescued us, had it not for him who gave his life, had it not for the blood of Jesus, had it not been for him to suffer and die for us, where would we be? Had it not been for the man Christ Jesus, had it not been for the old rugged cross, had it not been that he took our praise and he died for us, had it not been for him paying the price, where would we be? Where would we be if Jesus didn't love us? Where did he, we, would we be if he had to give this life? Where would he be if he had to sacrifice it? Where would you and I be? We wouldn't be here. Maybe we wouldn't be someplace that's calling on somebody else's name. But let me say this to you. It doesn't matter what other name you have. You could be a steward. You could be a smith. You could be a this. You could be a that. Those names can't save you. The only name that can save you is the name of Jesus. When you stand before the Lord, Sewell don't mean anything. Jones don't mean anything. If the Lord Jesus is not all over you, in you, and around you, that's what God recognizes. Because that's the name that God gave him. That's the name that God is looking for. Every one of us have to be little Jesus. And some of us can be big Jesus. Because we have to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior. Right. Every one of us has to bear that name. People can find all kinds of things. I do good deeds. I do this. I do this. I do that. Can that save me? No. A lot of people testify and say us Christians are too dogmatic because the only way that we are saying that you can get to God is through Jesus. Let me say this and I'll say it publicly and I'll say it again. If anybody try to come to God to any other way than through Jesus, you're nothing but a thief and a rock. And that is Bible. But what about all the good deeds? Good deeds are good. But you still need Jesus. And no matter what we do, don't forget about God. Don't get so caught up with Jesus to forget about God. Some people will get so caught up in Jesus they forget about God. You don't separate them. It is God that created us. It is God so loved. It is God that gave. It is Jesus who died. Jesus paid the price for you and I. Jesus was the one when God was looking for a sacrifice and no one could bear the price of that sacrifice. No one could give God what he needed to redeem mankind. Jesus went to the cross. He shed his blood. He died for you and I so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. That's why we praise him. That's why we glorify him. That's why we thank him. That's why we honor him. Because there was one that was willing to die in my stead. I know we can say our, but there are times I mean it's personal. Jesus Christ died for me. Sometimes we say he died for us, but uh, some of us just say in the background, no, Jesus Christ died for me. And because he died for me, I will live for him who died for me. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? If you, if I start counting my blessings, we will be here all night. Yes, there are some downfall. Yes, there are some standing up. But when I look around and see what the Lord has done for me, it makes me want to go all the way. Yes, sometimes the burden gets heavy. Yes, sometimes it gets tough. Yes, sometimes it feels like I'm down on But when I think about Jesus,
Jesus and all that he has done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Thank God for Jesus. Yes, we have our trials. Yes, we have our tribulation. Yes, we have our testing. But I did not bid for the man Christ Jesus. We all have our trouble. We all have our trials. We all get down beaten by the enemy at times. But when I'm down, then the Lord Jesus picks me up. The songwriter says, he never promised there's always sunshine. He never said there'll be no rain. But let me tell you this, when the rain and the storms of life come sweeping over me, in the rock, I will hide. In the shallow, I will die. Though the storm yes. keep on raging yes. in my life. And let me say this, sometimes the storm rains. Yes. Sometimes the billows roll. Yes. You can't tell if it's night from day. You don't know if you're going or coming. But guess what? My anchor is rooted and grounded. When a ship is out there and that anchor goes down and gets rooted, the wind can't come, everything can blow, but that ship is anchored. Let me say this, when you are anchored in Jesus, billows may come, stars may come, this may blow, that may blow, but guess what? My soul has been anchored in the Lord. Yes, I realize sometimes things don't always work the way I want it to, but guess what? It's not going to always work out the way you want it to. It's the way God wants it to work out. And many times, what we fail to see is to take off our glasses and put on the glasses of the Lord. See our lives through the lens of God. When you see your life through the lens of God, you will say, oh, it's going to work out all right. The songwriter picks up and says, I'll make it all right. I'll make it all right. As long as my Jesus keeps me, I'll make it all right. Do we have trials? Yes, we do. Guess what? Jesus said, I used some trials too. Jesus went through some temptation. Jesus went through some struggle. Yes, Jesus know what it means for your friend to forsake you. Because when he was down there and Peter denied him three times, he knows what it feels like. When he looked in Peter's eyes, and Peter looked in his eyes, Peter knew that something had wrong. I had let down and denied my Savior. But you know what? The same Peter who denied him is the same Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost and preached the first message to the well of them in the name of Jesus. He said, Jesus, a man approved of God with signs and wonders and miracles. He's got a mighty holy ghost on fire. He's the same Jesus that I'm telling you about. The same one you crucified with wicked men's hands who went to Calvary and died on the cross for you and I. It's the same Jesus that gave us this Holy Ghost. And while we speak, we speak in the name of Jesus. We can't not but tell you about Jesus. So when I be right, Obey you and God. Let us obey God because we're going to teach and preach. We're going to teach and we're going to preach Jesus. So bring it on, Mr. Devil. We're going to preach Jesus. We're going to preach Jesus. Jesus was approved of God with signs and miracles and wonders. Yes, let it come. These men. When they took them and they went to them and they talked to them and they had counsel and they were unlearned. How many of us are unlearned in certain things? But guess what? They will have to acknowledge that you had been with Jesus. We had been with Jesus. How do they have that boldness? They have been with Jesus. Have you been to Jesus? Have you been to Jesus? For the cleansing power? Have you been washing the blood of the land? Guess what? We couldn't have died for ourselves. Because we were no good. 
We couldn't have died for ourselves because our blood wouldn't work. We couldn't have died for ourselves because we were not spotless. We couldn't have died for ourselves because we were all messed up, tied up in sin. But there was one who was willing to die in our stead that a soul so unworthy might live and the path to the cross he was willing to tread all my sins to forgive. Guess what he did? He nailed them to the cross. He nailed them to the cross. Your sins and my sins, they spat upon him. They plucked his beard. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They pierced him inside. Why? Because of you and because of me. That's why when Isaiah picked up, he said, for he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his shot, we are here. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. But God has laid upon him the iniquity. Of us all. He was despised and rejected. A man of sorrow and a friend of grief. Yet we hid as it was our faces from him. When Isaiah saw him, he says, Yet it pleases God to bruise him. It pleased the Lord to bruise, bruise Jesus for me. And he was cut off from the land of living. And who shall declare his generation? Who will speak for Jesus? Who will speak for Jesus? Who will talk for Jesus? Who will stand up and say, Lord, I will declare your name to the whole world? Who will spread his generation? Who will carry on his legacy? Who is going to spread his name? Who will still say, for Jesus I live and for Jesus I die? of Jesus with you, man of sorrow and of woe. Who will stand and be counted? Who will stand and be counted? Count me, Lord. Count me, Lord. Count me, Lord. Though the storms of life raging, count me, Lord. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. No, never. How can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget? Jesus, how But he was wounded for our transgression. Let's make it personal. He was wounded from He was bruised for the chastisement of my peace was upon him. And through his strife, I am what I am because the Lord gave his life. I am what I am because he prays the price. I am what I am because Jesus died for me. I am what I am just because of Jesus. It's no goodness that I have done. I was no good in those shoes, but Jesus died for me while I was yet a sinner. Christ died for me. There is no other name. No other name. No other name given among men. Whereby you must be saved. Do you want to be saved? Do you want to be saved? We dress up so nicely and we look so good. The Bible says he beautified the meek with salvation because some of us were rough, some of us were tough, some of us were afraid to look at, some of us when you see us on one side of the street, we cross the other side, but when Jesus came into our life, the longer I serve him, the sweeter it goes. There is no more war, there is no more contention because guess what? I am a new creature. I'm a brand new man. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. You know, all things are become new. What you see today is not what I was. And what you see today is not what I'm going to be in the future. Because my future looks bright. My future looks bright. 
because of the lie. So when they, somebody says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have entered in the hearts of men, eyes have seen it. The next verse says, because God has revealed it to us through his spirit. Guess what? We know what the end is going to be. I know what the end is going to be. I know what my end is going to be. The question is you, hey man, thank you, eternal life. But let me say this. Every soul is going to live for all eternity. Every soul is going to live for eternity. It's just a matter of where you're going to spend eternity. If you don't have the name of Jesus all over, wrapped up, tied up, tangled up, all in you, they're going to spend time with Jesus. Sometimes a, a person, a woman wants to get married, but she don't want to take the man's name because she wants her own name. When they ask to be, me to be baptized in the name of Jesus, I was willing. I was willing to take on the name of Jesus. Are you willing? Are you willing to take up your cross and follow him? He said, come unto me. He said, just come unto me. All he that labor and I have made him. And I will give you rest. He's not talking from the nine to five job. He's not talking about no eight hour day. He's talking about 24 7. Heavy laden with what? With sin. Are you tired? Are you tired of living in sin? Are you tired of living the same old life? You come every day, you come to the church, the preacher preaches, you hear the word. But you say, as the songwriter says, Jesus said, I am he that supplies all your need. And you said, I will. But tomorrow, tomorrow you'll give your life. But what about today? What about today? What if tomorrow for you the sun never shines? He says, the day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Jesus is calling somebody today, letting you know that there is no other way to get to God but through Jesus. There's none other way. No other name amongst men. No other name given on the heaven. No other name accept the name of Jesus. Does that mean that I've got to give up some stuff? Oh yeah. Yeah. If you want to be married to a man, you got to give up some things too. You can't be with one and running around with the other. You can't be with God and Jesus and run around with the devil. Can't do it. You can't do it. You have to give it up. You have to come to Jesus. Put your hands up and come to him. Surrender. There was one that was willing to die for you and for me. You see, even if you don't want to accept it, Jesus still died for you. All you have to do is just receive it. That's all you have to do. How do I do that? Well, the Bible tells us how to Acts 2.38, not too much repent. If you don't repent of your sins and you come for baptism and we baptize you, doesn't do any good. You've got to repent. You've got to be godly sorry for your sins. You've got to acknowledge that you're a sinner. 
and say, Lord, just as I am. But I have to fix myself first. No, you can't fix yourself. If we were to take a survey now, guess what? I try, and there are many more here who try to fix themselves, and we could not. Jesus never said, tidy up yourself and come to me. He never said to make sure you fix everything and get rid of everything and then you come to me. He said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden." He said, the rest you're looking for, he said, I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Lord is not going to put anything on nobody. The Bible said he will not suffer anything to come upon us more than we are able to bear. So today, who are you trusting in? President Biden? MacArthur? Trump? The senators? The mayor? The governor? We look to them for certain things, but guess what? They can't give us what we need to take us to glory. Amen. Yes, they may give you a check, but the bigger thing is, where are you going to cash it? You got to cash it down here. But what the Lord is giving to us, we can take it to glory, Amen. and we can cash it. The songwriter says, so I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. He said, I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. There is a crown that's awaiting you. There's a crown that's awaiting me. All you have to do is come to Jesus. Come to Jesus while you may. Swing your arm doors while they open. Be them enter while you may. There is room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there is still room for one. There is still room for you. There is room at the cross for you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. In Jesus' name.